My name is Esben Holmes. I am uh, the teacher in this course in Introduction to Geographic Information Systems. I have subtitled the course Data Journalism Meets Cartography because this is what it's about. It's about collecting data and then visualizing it so that we can tell a story behind the data. If you look at the bit more formal outcomes of the course, what I'll be emphasizing is your ability to work independently your ability to do cartographic communication both on printed media and on online media. I expect you to get a knowledge of how the Danish territorial organization is represented by spatial data, so what data is there, what is represented by what. I will expect you to understand how we can represent both qualitative and quantitative information using geodata and I will also look into how we can use cartographic communication to explain complex spatial relationships. The skills that I expect you to have after the course are that the ability to harvest information, go and find data somewhere, and then communicate it um, using different forms of cartographic skills. What I expect to find in them. With that said, I am always very open to um, suggestions. So if there's you know things that you find missing or that you'd rather have put in this in some lecture, well, contact me and uh, we can take a discussion at the first lecture about what could be done. Introduction. The introduction um, is all about well, two things basically. What is geodata and how do we work with geodata? So in what is geodata? Geodata consists of three components, the attribute data, which we call the what, so what do we have where. We have so soil types, building types, road names. We have temporal data, that is the when. So when was this building built? Um, when was this observation made? Whatever. And then we have spatial data, which we might call the where. So we have these three components, the what, the when, and the where. We will then talk about what is special about spatial data. Why do we have all this fuss about maps and graphic communication? Why are we so interested in that as humans? And we will also talk about what are coordinate systems? How do we represent locations on the surface of the Earth? In the other part, where we are talking about the software, we have to talk about what is geographic information systems, what are the primary services delivered by such information system. We'll talk about different types of what I have called spatially enabled software, so software that can work for spatial data. Lots of software can do it, you probably try Google Earth, but Excel can do it, but lots of things. But what are they? Which categories are there? How, what do we, how do we differentiate between different types of spatially enabled software? And then we'll look at that special type of software um, that are focused, that are purpose built for working with spatial data, sometimes also called GIS misleadingly. But basically, we'll go in and look at that software we'll be using, QGIS. So, what is QGIS? How is it basically uh, user interface? What can we do? How can we do it? And then we'll finish out with looking at how we get data into QGIS. In our second lecture, we will be looking at maps and map design. So what is a map? Why use a map? Different types of maps? Principles of map design? What is a good? Or how do we make a good map? And also, of course, how do we do it in QGIS? Lecture 3, we will be looking at what is called interval and ratio data. Basically, that's statistical data. But we'll have to understand different types of data. So we'll be looking at how data can be categorized into different types and how they can be visualized. Classic classification is to distinguish between nominal data, ordinal data, and interval and ratio data. We will be looking at how to do intervals for data visualizations. What does the creation of intervals mean for how the map come, will look? We will look at different color schemes, how to use color schemes efficiently, what is called cartograms, 
um, a special type of map where the area is proportional to the size of the attribute that we are mapping. We'll talk about putting labels onto the map. Um, pebble maps and other forms of visualizations of a multiple value data. In uh, lecture 4, we will be looking at working with non spatial data, so information, the attribute data. We will be uh, accessing data, so how do we get data from a spreadsheet into QGIS? We will do calculation on the attribute data, we will connect attribute data with spatial data, and we will talk about how to filter so we can see, okay, only show me the municipalities with a high unemployment or where there's many PhDs or whatever. In the fifth lecture, we'll talk about topographical maps. What are topographical maps? Basically, they are topos, Greek meaning place. So, top and graphic, that is describing. So, place describing maps. We will talk about sources for information for doing data for doing topographical maps. We'll talk about symbolizations. How do we choose correct symbols? efficient symbols for maps like that. We will talk about special types of maps, insert maps where you can zoom in on a little area or overview maps where you can see okay what is the greater context of what we're working with. And then of course we'll talk about this big subject of projections. How can we display the round earth on a flat map? In the sixth lecture we will be talking about collecting data from different data sources. So of course, what are the main data sources, both national, Danish, and international? We'll talk about satellite data and registered data. We'll talk about how to combine them based on locations, so how to work with address data. Lots of Danish data sets are based on addresses. Where do we find all the used car dealers or all the pollution or whatever? And we'll also look at different types of statistical units that are both national there are different cities like Copenhagen have their own internal units for, for doing statistics, but there's also international ones at the EU level and even at the global level. In uh, the seventh lecture, we'll be talking about maps for web media, so online maps. We'll be talking about specifically what are the restrictions, what are the possibilities of online media. Uh, dynamic maps, you can zoom in as you want, you can do different things opposed to the static map of the print. We will also talk about some of the more specific issues about protecting data and ensuring anonymity um, so people can't zoom in and see okay exactly where does all the protected flowers grow or whatever. We will talk about some of the technologies that we use to do um, web maps, so um, how do you do a map that's just a standard picture on a web window? How can we uh, use different data services to do it? And um, use some of those dedicated mapping sites that are around on the internet. Lecture 8, oh, I have different proposals for Lecture 8. Um, one would be to continue from where we left off in lecture 7 and look at some advanced maps using um, D3 which is data driven pages so how can we combine graphics and maps into interactive maps people can click on and get additional information or we can do something completely different such as look at how to do interpretation of satellite imagery well, all of these things are as I said up to discussion if um, you have ideas, things like that, um, please contact me. My email is on Kursoptico and on Moodle. Uh, I hope this answered some questions, but otherwise, as I said, please contact me.